a wider tyre is really faster than narrow tyres. It's one of the big topics in the road cycling market at the moment, so I thought I'd do some science and find out. Well, not really science, but a bit of real world testing to see if there's any differences. And the tyres for the test are a 25mm wide tyre and a 32mm wide tyre. And the reason for these two tyres is simply because this giant TCL I've been testing for the last month, and if you missed my first ride on this, it's linked above, comes stock with a 25, but it will take up to a 32. So I thought I'd see what's better, narrower or wider. So my method for this testing is very simple and it's called a roll down test. So I start at this line you can see here and I roll down a hill, coasting, no pedaling, holding the same position as much as possible. And I roll down the hill until I get to the finish line, which is clearly marked by the meeting of the old and new tarmac. And I'll do it three times on each set of tires. And then we'll go home and we'll do some uh, data comparison and see how they compare. You might be wondering why I'm not using a steeper hill. And it's a good question. The reason is to keep the speed I reach when I get to the bottom below about 15 miles per hour. Because below about 15 miles per hour, thereabouts, rolling resistance from the tires is one of the biggest factors you face. Above about 15 miles per hour, aerodynamics becomes one of the bigger factors. So keeping the speed low is the aim of the game to really focus on the rolling resistance of the tires. Just before we get cracking with this testing, it's probably worth pointing out that there are many, many variables when you're testing products, especially in the real world with different temperatures and pressures and wind conditions. I tried to eliminate as many as possible. I'm testing on the same day, so the same weather conditions, wearing the same clothing, and I'm trying to hold the same position down the road each time. But there are different road surfaces, different tire tread pattern compounds that can all make a difference on the outcome of the data you get. It's not gonna be the most scientific or accurate test, I admit, but it's a real world test, and it's a test that is easily repeatable. So anytime I want to test a tire or tire pressure, I can come to a stretch of road and do my own testing. And that's the main thing, I can easily repeat this data and it's consistent, hopefully, to give me some useful data to help me choose uh, the best tire pressure for any given tire or what tire width is best for any different bike. And it's something I think you can do at home as well. If you can find a road like this and you've got the time and commitment to want to do this, you can easily test different tire pressures, which I recommend you do, or different tires if you buy new tires and see if there's any differences when you're actually testing it in this sort of repeatable, controllable uh, setup. For this roll down test, I'm using tubeless tires from Giant a 25 millimeter wide Gavia Course 1 and a 32 millimeter wide Gavia Fondo Zero, both fitted to a giant TCR Advanced Pro 1 disc I've been riding recently. Both tires are tubeless and installed on the same SLR1 rims with a 19 millimeter internal width. Pressures were calibrated with a digital pressure gauge and set to my preferred riding pressures. So that's 80 PSI in the 25 millimeter wide tire and 60 PSI in the 32 millimeter wide tires. Pressures attained after several weeks of riding to suit my personal taste, focus on providing a smooth ride on a variety of road surfaces. The roll down test takes place on a 500 meter road with an average gradient of about 5%, 7% at the steepest and 2% at the bottom. There we go then, three tests on each set of tyres. Got my times collected. Time to head back to my garage and do some comparison and see if there's any differences between narrow and wide. And just to add, I did the actual testing before I filmed because I'm just filming with myself, camera and me. So I did the testing separately to make sure I got the best possible data and then I filmed it afterwards, just in case you're questioning my testing procedure here. Okay, it's time to share the results of my controlled roll down test with you. And without further delay, drum roll please, here they are. And there we go, a wider tyre is clearly faster than a narrow tyre. But what do you think? What are your impressions and thoughts? Let me know down in the comment section below. So for years, we have known that narrow tyres are faster, but as my testing shows, that is clearly no longer the case. A wider tyre is definitely faster. As simple and basic as my testing is, it does highlight the benefits of a wide tire at low pressure over a narrow tire at a high pressure in quite a short, 
controlled test. And that difference, though small, is definitely there. You can't avoid the fact that a wide tire is testing faster than a narrow tire. And that difference will be even greater on a rougher road surface. This does back up my thoughts and impressions of testing wire tires for many years. As wire tires got more popular, the more demand for wire tires, and the latest crop of road bikes are now embracing wire tires with ever increasing tire clearance. And I've always felt there'd be no penalty in a wire tire. They can feel slower because they're isolating you from a lot of the vibration coming through the road surface compared to a narrow tire at high pressure. But the results on time testing, news and power has always confirmed my thoughts that a wire tire is faster. Plenty of studies, independent tests as well out there showing that wire tires do test faster. And this test here, as simple as it is, does show quite easily how you can find out that a wire tire is faster than a narrow tire in your own controlled testing if you run your own results with your own tires. Now, of course, the results will vary depending on rim and tire combinations, uh, tire construction, how high quality the carcass is, the tread compound, the tread pattern, uh, the road surface, rider weight, many other factors as well. But in my own testing where I try to control as many variables as possible with just a tire being a the difference, there's a clear benefit to a wide tire and that is hard to avoid. There's no getting around the fact that numbers show a wide tire is faster, even over a short 500 meter section. So over a longer route, that can add up and give you quite a margin of improvement over a narrow tire. There are downsides to a wide tire, of course. They're heavier, there's a lot more rubber, a lot more material, so they're heavier than a narrow tire. And the aerodynamics of a wide tire probably won't be as good as a narrow tire, but we're seeing improvements in terms of rim width and rim design designed around a wide tire, like the new Zip 303 Firecrest I shared with you a little while ago. So a wide tire on a wide rim is a key to reducing that aero penalty you get by putting a wide tire on a narrow rim. But that's something I cover in another topic in a future video. But for non-racing cyclists where their speeds are usually lower and the road surface is more varied and usually rougher, and the distance you're cycling is usually longer than a road race, then the benefits are clear and easy to appreciate. Aerodynamics is still a factor at even quite modest speeds, but at lower speeds, rolling resistance is going to be a bigger factor. And a wide tyre offers you that extra rolling resistance improvement over a narrow tyre. And then you get all the other benefits of a wide tyre, such as improved comfort, especially from that lower tyre and bigger volume of air, cushioning you from the road. You get reduced fatigue from the suspension benefits of a wide tyre and you get more control and traction in a wide range of condition, especially if it's wet as well. So numerous benefits that in most cases will offset the small penalty in weight and aerodynamics compared to a narrow tyre. There's loads more I could cover in this video, but I really want to focus on just doing a very controlled, very focused roll down comparison test between a narrow tyre and a wide tyre, just to see if there are any differences and if there are, which there have been, how big those differences are and whether you should move to a wide tyre if your bike will take wide tyres and you're keen on embracing the benefits that many people, myself included, are talking about with wide tyres. Of course, many people aren't ready for wide tyres yet and many people I've seen from the comment section are still running narrow tyres at high pressures and that's fine, whatever suits you is fine. Just use what you prefer and what suits your riding style and rider preference. But we're seeing a greater choice of wide tyres and it's great for people who want to embrace wide tyres for the comfort they offer and now for the rolling resistance benefits my testing shows they offer. So to wrap up this video, if you want speed and comfort, then wide tyres are clearly hard to beat. And once you try them, like me, you probably won't ever go back to a narrow, high pressure tyre. But that's all for now. Hopefully you found this video useful and interesting if you're on the fence about wide tyres. And if you have any further questions, get down below and I'll be happy to help out. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed watching the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, all your support really helps to grow my channel and to support my ambition to deliver more bike reviews and more bike tech trends. So make sure you subscribe by clicking that red button down below. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Take it easy and I'll see you again soon.